second speaker will be Lorraine Thursby. Lorraine started nursing in 1984 as a nurse auxiliary and has since gained experience both commercially and within the NHS sectors. Lorraine became a clinical nurse specialist in tissue viability in 2005 and also took up the challenge of recommencing the manual handling service at George Elliott Hospital NHS Trust, where she also completed a postgraduate certificate in back care management from Loughborough University. Lorraine maintained the role as service lead for both manual handling and tissue viability within her trust, only relinquishing the manual handling role four years ago to concentrate on tissue viability, but she still transfers manual handling skills within her service development. Um, I'm just going to give a bit of a general overview because within my trust we are very, very active with our use of um, immersion therapy. But I think the key thing for us is about understanding and developing a greater awareness of challenge to make sure we're fitting the right patient to the right equipment. Thankfully, history has changed and we are more aware that we have a greater understanding of the etiology of pressure ulcer development and the effective management and interventions that we can have. We are looking at time to act. This is a multifactorial approach to utilise our clinical judgment as a key component. It is never the risk assessment in isolation, but a holistic assessment with clinical judgment that is pivotal, ensuring that the right surface is given for the right patient at the right time. We all recognise the importance of risk assessment in combination with good skin care and appropriate mechanical offloading. As part of our patient safety goal, this must be a given. Understanding the functions and benefits of your equipment will assist you in reaching this goal. So when should we consider immersion therapy? Current selection may not address the changing and often challenging needs of the patient. And this list is not exhaustive. But we should be thinking about the repositioning challenges for those hemodynamically unstable patients, very much like Debbie highlighted in her case study. The slightest movement may result in desaturation. Consider the impact that will have on their tissue perfusion. Can that be addressed currently with the equipment that you have? Are those patients at risk of further damage? As the list suggests, address those issues by selecting a support surface that meets the individual's needs. Identify and prevent potential complications within the support surface that is being used and put the need of the patient strongly in focus, as well as the prevention of pressure ulcers. We are all aware of the need to identify those at risk of developing damage. It needs to be realistic and actions implemented need to be documented, but interrogate your score, challenge, if it truly reflects that patient in front of you. Clinical judgment and sometimes gut are essential. Don't get into the habit of just treating the score. We have to think beyond that. We need to get it right because we know the negative impact of pressure ulceration on the patient's quality of life, not just from the pain from the damage, but heightened anxiety, fear and possible isolation, all of which is, can be influential to their ability to go on with their wound healing. Clinical judgment, skin and pressure ulcer status, age, immobility, those things that we look at day in, day out. As I said, consider that patient in front of you, exploring any direct causal factors, including their immobility. Look at their skin, any previous or current pressure ulcerations, and what is their perfusion like? Consider the comorbidities and their impact any impaired circulation? How is their oxygen carrying capacity? Has that been compromised? Have they had the ability to deliver the nutrients and to excrete waste? Has their sensory perception been affected? Are they able to independently move? Can they move? What's the impact their medications having? As I said, this list is not exhaustive. Does your equipment selection help you reduce and minimize those risks? Don't wait for the skin deterioration. It's about being proactive. 
And there are often times when that holistic jigsaw puzzle has to be put in together. If we get it right, we can control or eliminate pain. We can aid and improve mobility in the long term. We can have a positive impact on their mental status and that will in turn improve motivation, may encourage them to eat and improve their nutrition. The right surface can help and will help the improvement on the blood flow, tissue perfusion, which will in turn improve the overall well-being and improvement for the patient. Inappropriate selection or failing to see the need to step up, then the impact can be negative Unintended adverse events associated with handling tasks, decreased comfort, fear of being handled, pain. And again, that links so eloquently with what Debbie said with her gentleman. Poor handling could result in skin tears, especially if the skin is very fragile and friable and the increased risk of pressure damage. We have that fatal saying, don't we? Always look at the whole of the patient, not just the hole in the patient. So I wanted to just give some of the types of patient challenges where we have so embraced um, immersion therapy, dolphin. We've had very runs of complex neck fascia patients, necrotizing fasciitis, and these are some, just some different examples of different treatment stages and different patients that we've had. They're not all on areas that are subject to pressure by their location. However, their wounds that are compromised they can be impacted by pressure. The impact of positioning is very problematic. And we have to think not only beyond pressure ulceration, but recognise the complex interactions that the pressure just on the tissue that is so compromised can impact. And we need that simulated fluid environment for these patients, especially in the early debridement stages when they're in ITU postoperatively. There are issues of vasoconstriction. There can be pain issues which can cause vasoconstriction, possible impact of vasopressors and ventilation, all create handling difficulties, all create positioning challenges. Just further on into their journey, it can be the management of their reconstruction, their grafts and flaps. These fragile areas will benefit from surfaces that help produce that tissue deformation. So that's one extreme. Unfortunately, I work in a small district general hospital. We have a very, very elderly population. And unfortunately, that leads us on to seeing quite often patients who are reaching their end of their natural process of life. And so I wanted to think about skin changes at life's end and how the dolphin can be so instrumental giving back some quality for those patients. At the various end stages of life, we recognise that a number of vital systems are compromised. The skin's tolerance to pressure decreases and it can become clinically impossible to prevent skin breakdown despite optimal care. The failure results often as hyperperfusion and it can be acute, chronic or end stage. In multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, blood is shunted away from the skin and vital organs. Skin failure will occur. And in these areas under stress, such as the pressure loading areas, but it isn't always limited to that. Fingers, toes can often see resulting necrosis. And in the elderly, we often see chronic failure due to the multiple comorbidities that they have. This is impacting by other influencing factors due to their limited mobility, their malnutrition, often weight loss, low serum albumin and, hyper and low haemoglobin levels. Adding to that the impact of dehydration, their skin is so vulnerable. We have to then consider the impact of tissue perfusion, what we can do to reduce the impact of hypertension and hypoxia on their skin integrity. So we also look at that point at thinking about the surface that we have them on, keeping them comfortable. Skin failure comes in many shapes and formats and these are just a few some we will have seen some we may have seen but not recognized as a warning sign but it reflects the compromised skin and soft tissue perfusion 
At that point, we have decreased tolerance to external insult and impaired removal of the metabolic waste. The skin will become during this time with such a logistic challenge. Compromised immune response also play an important role in the advanced cancer patients and those undergoing corticosteroids and immunosuppressant agents. These patients we have to think about. Scale by definition occurs at life's end, but skin compromise may not be limited to the life end situations. It can occur with the acute and chronic illness. And in the context of multi-organ failure, it's not limited to end of life. These alterations are not pressure alterations. However, they have multiple factors just the same that will exacerbate the risk. And we need to consider how to protect the skin in those extremely compromised states. And so I just wanted to finish that thought process at looking at the person at risk. It should be a patient centred approach. And we have the five P's that will guide us through our assessment. And it's very much like any assessment we do when we're looking at skin. So it's in no reality anything different from our normal holistic assessment. We should be taking into consideration, do they have any widespread metastases, any bone pain? Think of the benefit that a surface such as immersion can give. Have they any coexisting medical conditions that will impact the perfusion? Decreased nutritional intake is going to impact on them. Incontinence, immobility, sensory loss. They're changing circulatory systems. Um, status, mirroring the pressure also risks. In the final days, comfort, patient family issues, repositioning can be challenging. We need to think about how we can improve our outcome. Too often a repositioning may fatigue the patient. That could increase the decline more rapidly. So we need to think about a balance, a way of improving comfort without fatigue for the patient. Communicate with the family and the patient about skin changes. Educate them to how this can be improved and how you're trying to address their needs. If we think about the surface, get things right, it may allow the patient to spend more time with their loved ones and their family around them. If we can improve pain, can we reduce the need for sedation, pain relief that could affect them so they have more lucid time to have that final communication and say their goodbyes. Use skin changes as a visual aid to help make that connection. Prevention is important for well-being. We need to think about enhancing the quality of life until death. And hopefully we will help to reduce planned and unnecessary changes that could become distressing. Such surface will help remove the excess pressure, help reduce pr friction and shear improve the risk from moisture and by making them more comfortable may make them take more fluid just a little bit more nutrition and give them that time with their loved ones so i'd actually ask you to start thinking about a different type of patient group that these mattresses and surfaces will benefit consider that immersion therapy it's not just for the quality of life but it will actually help promote a dignified passing. It will help reduce pain and pro promote calmness and peace. This has a fantastic benefit for your patients and their families. It gives them time to say their goodbyes. Quality of time cannot be bought. So I'd just like to summarise and make you think. Make sure we don't fail. Insanity is experiencing and expecting something different, but changing nothing. We need to be proactive. Do the same thing, the outcome will remain the same. You have to take that holistic view of the patient. Consider what you can change and address. Look at how your equipment will make those changes and help those benefits. It's just a different piece to your jigsaw puzzle. But one that if you get it right, can make such a difference, not just but to the patient, but to all the individuals looking after them. We should be thinking how we can improve the patient's overall health status. I'm hoping that's just made you think and I'd like to thank you for taking your time to listen and also thank Medstrom for inviting me to talk to you today. <laughs>